Earlier this week, my buddy Adam Wright published a video that I was truly inspired by and wanted to do something similar for myself. What he did was found a local website that could use a few design tweaks. He brought it into Figma, made a few changes, and really improved the design. So I wanted to do something similar today. Now I'll leave a link to his video down in the description below and I would really encourage you to go check it out. What he ended up doing was just doing some tweaks and adjustments to improve the design and what I ended up doing was completely redesigning a page from scratch. Now I want to put a bunch of caveats in this video before we jump in. I haven't spoken with this business owner about their marketing or their business or their strategy so I'm going to have to make a lot of assumptions here on my own just to go ahead and do some kind of redesign. Now that's not what I would typically do if this was a real client project where we'd go through an entire discovery process to do things like go through their analytics and see what's working and not working on the website before we make any of these improvements. I'm going into this completely blind and just trusting my intuition and my experience on projects in the past. There are some assumptions I'm going to make in here that probably aren't true whatsoever and would be changed entirely if I was actually working with this client. However, I think it's pretty interesting to watch other people work and kind of see what their thought process is, so I'm going to go ahead and put this out here anyways. Obviously, I don't want to rag on anybody's work here. What I'm doing in this video is my own interpretation and based on my own preferences. I definitely don't know everything that went into building this website or the strategy or anything like that, so who am I to say that my design ends up better than theirs? This is really just a personal preference thing and to give me a little bit of exercise to work on those design muscles. So if this sounds interesting to you, then stick around and let's get started. All right, so I got a screenshot of this existing website pulled up here in Figma so we can go through all of it. Now, the first thing I notice is we have this center align navigation here with the logo goes right in the middle. I see this happen a lot when you end up with a logo with these proportions, something that's kind of one by one, either a square or a circle, because there's not a lot of vertical real estate here, you have to make that logo so tiny in order for it to fit in your navigation. And one good way to disguise that is to kind of center align it here. However, putting these links on either side here, it's not working really well for me. Even though this text is so tall here, this is a pretty large font for navigation. It's still not really standing out in a way that makes it really obvious that these are the links you need to click. I think part of that is just because we're overlaying them on top of an image, but we also have distracting things like these little dividers in between all the links that's making it even harder to read. So I think there's some work we could do in the navigation right away to improve things. We also have these links to social media up here in the top right corner. I typically don't like to put those at the top of a website because as soon as you send somebody off to Facebook, Facebook's gonna know that they're looking for a contractor and they're gonna start bombarding that person with ads of other contractors. So essentially what you're doing is taking captive audience that's on your website and sending them off to social media where they may never come back because they might find other contractors in that process. Now, as far as the entire hero itself, I think this image back here is one of the best images on the entire website, but it's a little bit hard to see because it's been so faded. Now it's faded here and made lighter because we need all this text here to stand out on top of it. However, I don't think it's really helping the image or the text. The text is still a little bit hard to read and now we don't really get the impact of this image. So I think in a redesign, I'd wanna make this image a little bit clearer and really make it more impactful to show the kind of work Donovan painting and remodeling does. Now, the other thing I wanna point out here quickly is this button. We can see this button is white with a black stroke and black text in it. I just wanna point that out because we have some inconsistencies with buttons as we go down the rest of the page. Speaking of that, let's go ahead and scroll down and take a look at this next section here. Now, these are probably two different sections, but I'm gonna go ahead and just count them as one and we can kind of talk about them all together. This top half of it here, we have kind of the why pick us information, which is definitely good information to have. However, with the layout and the amount of text here, I don't think that everybody's gonna go through and read every word. What I actually think is the best part of this entire section here is what we have here in our process. I think that's one of the things a lot of customers are gonna be nervous about. When is the contractor gonna come? How am I gonna know how much it's gonna cost? What's gonna happen if the price goes up? All these kinds of different things that a process piece of content is really gonna help. They do a pretty good job here, but I think we could actually combine these two sections here. On the right, we have some information about your experience working with Donovan, and then on the left, we have their process. I think we could combine these two into something that's just a little bit more visually appealing, and if we make it more obvious that this is their process and make it really customer-focused, I think it's something that people are more likely to read. 
Having a lot of text on a website can be good for SEO, but having a lot of text on a website means that people probably aren't reading a lot of it. Really what we do when we look at websites is kind of skim the information, and big blocks of text like this, especially on a homepage, aren't really scannable. So I think there's some things we can do to improve this section as well. If we scroll down just a little bit further, we get to their testimonial here. We have another really nice image in the background. Of course, it has this orange overlay on top of it, which makes it a little bit more washed out, but it's still a nice kitchen renovation. Now this is showing off their testimonials here, and it's actually been put inside of a slider. So if you went to the live site, you'd see these are automatically cycling through. We have a lot of things kind of working against all this social proof here, which is so important to see what other people are saying about this business. One, we have text on top of the image, which just kind of naturally makes it hard to read. Two, it's all moving, so you might start to read something and then it swipes away from the screen. And then three, this font itself is really light and it's all italic, making it a little bit more of a strain on your eyes. And especially when you combine that with it all being center aligned, which is just naturally harder to read. I think there's a lot of things in this design that are working against actually making this testimonial as impactful as it could be. So let's scroll down to the next section here where we see all of their residential services. At the top, we can see the heading for this, which they've used kind of a stylized thing here where they have the stroke of the letters. That could be a cool motif on this website. However, I think this implementation actually makes it fairly hard to read. This is especially true as we get down to the smaller device sizes where the stroke of residential overlapping the thin letters of the painting and remodeling just make it a little bit too messy for my taste. Now, as far as the cards themselves, they're fine, but they're a little uninspired. If I bring you back to that point about the buttons here, here you can see we have a solid blue button with a bunch of space in between the button and the icon here. This has just made the buttons a little bit more inconsistent. If you remember in that hero section, it was a big white button, and here we have a really skinny blue one with a bunch of extra space in it. I think we could do something to come up with some kind of system for the buttons to make them a little bit more consistent and add to that overall appeal. I also just happened to notice that their power washing text here actually talks about kitchen design, so I think there's something that's gone wrong with the text in that. We have nine different service cards here that all kind of blend into one another. I think we could do something to group these or break them up in some way so it becomes less repetitive. As you can imagine, once you get down to the mobile breakpoint here, all these boxes are just gonna stack one on top of each other, which kind of just makes for a repetitive layout. So I think there's some things we can do there as well. Now we'll scroll down a little bit further. I actually had to do a double take here thinking that maybe my screenshot software did a bad job on this, but this is actually what it looks like on the live site. Up here we have an image that's got nothing on top of it and it's got kind of a dark overlay. And then down here we just have a white section with a tiny little call to action kind of placed over on the right. I'm not sure exactly what happened here. All I can imagine is something got broken on this website and hasn't been fixed. In fact, if you look at it on a big monitor, this image actually stops over here and all this on the side is just completely blank. So I think something's broken here, but even if it wasn't, I think we can improve this section by just coming up with something that's a little bit more cohesive. Now, if we scroll down, we have some important information here about the contractor being licensed and bonded. That's definitely something people are gonna to wanna to know before they invite you into your home. But this section, like some of the others, is just a little uninspiring with just kind of a gray bar background. Now, as we get to the bottom of the site here, we can see the footer at the bottom, but just above that, we have this commercial services area. Now, they've kind of stuffed this down at the bottom of the page, and there's no button or call to action here, which makes me believe that maybe this isn't a really important part of their business. Maybe they just want to let people know they will do commercial work, but I don't find any pages on their website that go into more detail about their commercial services. So I'm just going to take that as an assumption that this isn't a super important part of their business. Now we do have some alignment issues here. All this is left aligned and then all of this is center aligned and there's no real alignment between the two. So I think we can do some things to just clean this section up and make it look a little bit more presentable. And lastly, down here, we get to our footer. Now there's quite a bit of information going on here. So we'll just kind of tackle it one column at a time. I notice here that we have icons kind of left aligned and then we have icons center aligned. I think we need to do something here just to make these a little bit less messy because my eye doesn't really track all of this very well. We have the logo centered with these icons and then we have all of this kind of pushed over to the left and left aligned. So I think just cleaning that up could help quite a bit. Now in the next column here, we have their service area. This map is actually just an image, but it does link to their Google listing. But we have this icon right next to it that also links to their Google listing. And we have the Google icon here that links to their listing. 
That means that we have one, two, three links all going to the same place, all pretty much right next to each other, which I think is kind of overkill. So we can probably streamline that just a bit to make it a little bit less redundant. Now on the right, we have two columns that link to all their interior pages here. One is labeled Richmond and the other is labeled Midlothian. Now Midlothian is just a smaller suburb of Richmond. So I imagine anybody in Midlothian is probably going to be fine with hiring somebody from Richmond, but the inverse might not be as true. People in Richmond might not be thinking of a contractor in Midlothian. Looking at all this, I imagine that this is some kind of SEO work here where they're trying to put together pages that say things like drywall repair in Richmond and drywall repair in Midlothian so they can get those local keywords in there. Now this is kind of an outdated approach. I'm not sure how well this is working and we definitely wanna have a conversation with the client and look through their analytics to see how well this is working. But this is only really one step above from making the links the same color as the background. So it's probably not something I'm gonna include in my redesign. We can see all of these links just line up one for one with just a different town name here, which is a little bit redundant. This might be good for SEO. That's definitely debatable here, but it's certainly not good for user experience. If I came to this, I wouldn't know which one of these to click on since I'm not technically in Richmond or Midlothian, but I'm right in between the two. So as we look through all the notes we took here, we got quite a bit to go on and things we can improve. So why don't we switch gears and take a look at what I did for the redesign. So you can see I went with a completely different setup for the navigation and the hero here. I went with the more traditional approach of putting the logo over here on the left hand side even though it's pretty tall, since it's disconnected from the navigation over here on the right, it doesn't really look too out of balance or proportion here. Since the logo's over here on the left-hand side with the image and the navigation's over here in the white background, they're a little bit disconnected, so we don't have to worry as much about the alignment here, which gave us the opportunity to make this logo quite a bit bigger. Now, as far as the navigation itself, I was able to shrink that font size down quite a bit, but it's still completely legible. Of course, we got rid of all those social icons that were here at the top as well. Now, as far as the text in the hero, they just had one headline before, but I took the liberty to do a little bit of copywriting here just to give it a headline and subheadline, which I think makes this look a little bit nicer. Of course, we also tackled this button here. I've made kind of a consistent button style for the entire website, just to keep things flowing together a little bit better. Overall, I definitely think there's a pretty big improvement in this hero section itself. So let's go ahead and move on to the process information that we talked about just below that. Now before this was really two different sections, but I've combined it into one here. On the left hand side, we have the why us information. And on the right hand side, we have that process information, which I think is really valuable. Now by using these little icons here with the numbers in it, it makes it a little bit more obvious that these are kind of a step-by-step -step process that shows people what they're going through. And then I kind of massage the copywriting here just to really make this customer focused and show off some of the benefits of working with Donovan. All of these things are gonna be really important to the visitor, knowing the contract's gonna be coming in and making big decisions inside their home. We can also see just a slight gradient here. At the top left corner, we see kind of a light gray here that fades into a lighter color as it goes further to the right, which allows this to overlap here. This gives us some kind of separation in between these two sections without just drawing a hard line across it, which is something that I tend to do a lot in my designs. We'll scroll on down here to our section where we have all of our services. And you'll see, like I said before, I wanted to try to group these up and kind of break up the monotony. Of course, I did change the look of these cards here. I did use all the same images and text, but I've broke this up into little subsections. So here we have transform your space. Down here we have getting it done right. And here for all the outdoor living stuff, we have curb appeal. This just helps kind of break it up and categorize these things so that makes it a little bit easier to find. I'm thinking once we get down to mobile as well, this will kind of break up the design and make it a little bit less monotonous. Now the cars themselves got a little bit of a drop shadow as well as some border radius just to make them a little bit softer. And instead of putting the big buttons in them, I just put a little arrow here that I think we could animate when we hover over any of the cards. Scrolling down further on the page, we get to their testimonial section. I've actually put together several different sections into one here. I did really like this image they used for their testimonials before, so I included it. Now the image itself already had a orange overlay on the image, so I wasn't able to get rid of that even if I wanted to, but I decided to darken it a little bit here on the left side so we could see this text stand out on top of it, and it gets a little bit lighter over here on the right side, which matches a little bit more to their branding. Now, if you remember back to the original design, we had just kind of a blank image and then a call to action in it. I've combined all that information along with the information about being insured, bonded, and trusted to put this all into one section. 
I also went to their Google listing and went through all of their reviews to pick out some of the more impactful sentences here. I kind of styled them like a text message. I thought this was just a good way to show instantly that these are things people are saying about Donovan without including the really long testimonials that people might not read all the way through. This means they can see five different testimonials all in one view without having to scroll through everything, and they really get to the most important part that we want to show off here. Now there are links on the site to go to their Google listing if people want to read the entire reviews. We could even add a secondary call to action here that says maybe read our reviews that takes them directly to those reviews if people want to read the entire thing. But for me, I think this gets the point across without being too overwhelming with all the text. Obviously, this is a lot easier to read than it was before, so that's definitely one of the things I wanted to tackle. Moving down to the commercial services, I kept this pretty simple, just like we talked about before, since I don't think this is a huge focus of their business. Again, I kind of redid the copywriting here, so we have a headline and subheadline instead of just that list, aligned everything nicely, and then did put a call to action in here for getting an estimate. So if anybody is interested in their commercial services, at least they have an action to take, since there's no page to drive them to for those commercial services, which is something we might want to explore if we were going to build this site out further, to have some kind of dedicated pages on all these different commercial commercial services. As far as the footer, I tried to keep that nice and simple and condense everything down. Of course, we're keeping the logo here on the left. I just replicated that same navigation that's in the header down here on the right hand side, but I did go ahead and include the links to Facebook and Google here since that's something they had on their page before. We also had the copyright information and some information about their license that I just included at the bottom here, but this has all the basic things people need to get to. We might need to edit this to include some of those internal page links like they had before, or maybe even some kind of drop down here for the services so we can include all that information on every page. But as far as the design aesthetic, I think this looks a whole lot nicer than it did before. So I thought we'd wrap this up by looking at these two side by side to see what kind of difference we made. I tried to keep most of the content the same. I used all the same images. I used the same font styles, but I did tweak those fonts a little bit. You'll see my serif font here for the heading is a little bit thicker than what they had on theirs. I think that just makes it a little bit easier to read. Obviously, we can see the images a little bit better now. I think this process information is important and now it stands out a little bit better than it did before. As we get down to the service cards here, I think that breaking these up into different sections makes it a little bit more scannable, which is gonna be easier for people, like I said, especially on mobile, where that section might get a little bit repetitive. Now it's kind of hard to track some of these sections side by side. Up here we had our original testimonials and we've switched it to this look down here on the right hand side. And where we had this information about being insured and bonded, this call to action in this image, I've replaced all that with this column here and combined that with the testimonials to make it all into one section. Of course, we didn't do too much here with the commercial services, just cleaning that up a little bit, use the same image, and then I kind of replicated that motif from the header where we have one corner that has a big border radius. And then in the footer, just clean that up and simplified it quite a bit. Again, we'd have to consider all the SEO implications of a change like that. So that's a conversation I would definitely want to have with the client. Here you can see them both side by side and make your own determination on how I did as far as a redesign. This ended up being a really fun exercise, even though I did pour quite a few hours into it. One of the best ways to get better at design is to just spend a lot of time designing. There are plenty of websites out there where you might want to do things differently, so pulling those into Figma and doing your own interpretation is a good way to work on those muscles and improve your design over time. I'd love to know what you thought of this video. I haven't done one quite like this before. If you'd like to see more like this, I'd definitely be interested in doing them, so let me know down in the comments below. If there was something you disagreed with the way I approach it, I would love to hear about that as well, as having these conversations really makes us all better at the job we do. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up, and if you want to make sure to catch the next one, hit subscribe, and we'll see you then.